On today's show, Ford says the diesel F-150 will get 30 mpg. Toyota is doing a better job of hiding its autonomous technology and how monitoring your brain can improve the driving experience. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Well, it's been about a year since Ford announced it was going to put a diesel in the F-150, and we finally have more to report about the setup. The 3-liter power stroke engine produces 250 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque. Paired with the standard 10-speed transmission, Ford is estimating highway fuel economy at 30 miles to the gallon. Towing capacity comes in at 11,400 pounds, and it has a payload capacity of just over 2,000 pounds. Final EPA numbers and pricing will be announced in the spring when the trucks start hitting dealer showrooms. Toyota is showing off the next-gen version of its autonomous vehicle technology at CES. Called Platform 3.0, it's being demonstrated in a Lexus LS Hybrid. The LiDAR in the previous system could only look forward, but now the LiDAR can scan 360 degrees in up to 200 meters or over 650 feet. Engineers also worked with designers to blend the sensors in with the design to make the vehicle look more appealing. And while there is still equipment sticking out, it's definitely sleeker than the previous test car. Toyota also packaged the self-driving equipment to make it easier to build a fleet of vehicles which it will start doing this spring. Still to come, a look at more new technology from CES. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. The German supplier Continental is showing off what it says is the world's first touchscreen with a 3D surface. The screen uses haptic feedback to help distinguish between different virtual buttons without having to look at the screen. That means the driver will be able to keep their eyes on the road. And to make sure any functions aren't triggered accidentally, the screen measures how hard it's being pressed before a command is executed. The touchscreen features a flexible design which is going to give automakers the opportunity to customize the screen for a specific car or a specific brand. You know, we've heard of vehicle-to-vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure communication that's going to make driving safer, but what the heck is brain-to-vehicle or B2V technology? Well, it's a way to speed up reaction times and make driving more enjoyable, and it's what Nissan is showing off at CES. By using a device that monitors brain activity, the vehicle would know when the driver is about to make a maneuver, and then the driver assist systems could kick in faster. Or if the system detects the driver is uncomfortable, it could automatically change the driving mode or use augmented reality to make the interior a more relaxing environment. Nissan says with B2V, the system can take action two tenths to half a second faster than the driver could. And for even more from CES, be sure to check out our coverage of the show starting tomorrow. John will be talking to suppliers and automakers about their new developments in technology. Look for those interviews on our website, Autoline.tv. Coming up next, how Buick engineers cut weight from the new Enclave while making it a little bit bigger. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Well, despite being slightly larger, the new Buick Enclave is about 300 pounds lighter than before. And on last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Rick Spina, the executive chief engineer of crossovers at GM, and he shared how engineers were able to cut weight without sacrificing its size. The simple way I say this is we, we ask every engineer to pay a lot of attention to the mass or the weight of their parts. Lots and lots of attention. I know it sounds funny, but if you start saying it really matters, guys, and then you're willing to put some money on it, meaning, hey, guess what? That more expensive material really is more expensive, but it's worth the weight. 
okay? You can put a value to the weight sometimes if you choose to. You can say it's, you know, whatever is a dollar a pound or something like that. You can choose to. But inevitably, if you challenge a good engineer to come up with a better mousetrap, in this case, I'm going to measure the mousetrap in quality and cost and mass, right? They'll start doing it. Now, to get more specific, um, we took a, a, um, across all our crossovers, we've taken more of a, uh, more of an approach that says everybody in for mass and everybody in on different kinds of materials. So in some cases, we'll use traditional steel, especially on the outside of the body, where we've got to have great formability. In other cases, we'll use more difficult to manufacture, but really nice, super strong, um, more exotic steels, a little more expensive, harder to manufacture, more cost, but that gets you mass. So we do, so it's very customized, piece by piece. Mm -hmm. While I'm on the mass thing, I will also tell you that because crossovers, crossover customers value space. They value space more than size, right? It's that interior space you get, that's what sets you apart. You then say, well, if I can be very, very mass efficient, I can also be very um, space efficient or size efficient in my structure. Like think of the column of a building, right? I can have a column this big or a column this big that's load based. Our columns are the same way. If I can use a better material, I can get that section smaller. I get the section smaller, there's more room for your stuff. For more about the development of the new Enclave, you can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.